Alright guys, I'm back again, and today I'm here to show you guys one of the hardest games for the NES, and that is Ghosts and Goblins. Now, ever since Halloween a couple of days ago, I really had a strong urge to play this game, just because that pretty much everyone on YouTube is just like, Oh, Ghosts and Goblins, it's horror related, and we're gonna make an NES review about it, and, you know, just, <laughs> Ghosts and Goblins crazy, it just seems, everywhere on YouTube. So I figured I would just join the cult and actually take a crack at it and see how much I really do suck at this game. So I figured that, you know, that'd be kind of fun to do and just be entertaining for you guys to at least see how bad I really am at this game. So without further ado, let's go ahead and put it in the NES and we'll see how it plays. Alright guys, Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3 comes out tonight. And how am I spending it? By getting a butt whooping in Ghosts and Goblins. So, yeah, I guess that was kind of a pointless intro, but whatever, let's move on from that. So typical storyline of games back in the day, girl gets kidnapped, you're the guy, you rescue the girl. But instead of going through the Mushroom Kingdom, you're going through Zombie Land, it seems. And your character's name is Arthur, and you're going around throwing javelins at zombies and birds and devils and stuff. And occasionally the Venus flytrap as well. This game definitely has some really memorable music too, I really have to say. Alright, now I got the fireball weapon. Which a lot of people really complain about this weapon, but I really don't know why. But one thing that really pisses me off the most about this game, though, is that you only get two hits. I mean, it's kind of, you know, similar to Mario, though, where, you know, you would get a fire flower or a mushroom, die that time, and then you die one more time after that, and then you're dead. But this time it's a lot harder, because there really is no way that I could think of that gives you your armor back. So basically, no matter what, it's two hits and you're dead. That and the fireball is like really, really unresponsive. I know before that I said it was a decent weapon, but you really can only fire so many at a time, so that's kind of a drawback to using it. I just kind of wish I had the javelin back. But at least you could jump over the zombies if you really wanted to. Oh my god, what is that? Hey, I'm a frog. Um, okay. So apparently my first time trying, I can't even get through the first level. Let's just continue. No, let's not continue because that would mean I'll get that stupid fireball thing again. So you gotta watch this stupid intro again. Alright, let's try this again. God, this is so much easier now I got the javelin back. So, I guess now I definitely take back what I said about the fireball being a good weapon. It really isn't, because it's so unresponsive. Well, the only real weapon, I guess, that's really worthwhile having that I've seen so far is the knife. Which, I hope I'd be getting soon, because it's a really good weapon to have, and oh my god, I better not touch that. Okay, no fireball for me, alright. Shoot the Venus flytrap. And now the hardest part of the first level is coming up here in a second, this devil thing that you gotta fight. Now the trick to this is to ease up really slowly like this. And as soon as you see him, start throwing at him. Yes, got him. Alright. That always used to get me stuck, like, every time I would play this game, but I just played it so much that I really got the pattern down, and now I can pretty much take it down every time. Oh, what does this do? Okay, points. Cool. How about replenish my armor? Wouldn't that be even better? But no. Two hits and you're dead.
But at least it lets us continue right here. And at least you can actually crouch to try to defend yourself, but these ghost knight things have such, you know, really strange patterns, it's really difficult to kind of dodge them. Unless you really memorize their pattern. Which I really haven't totally mastered that yet. And these things really piss me off too, these... These ghost condom things. They really piss me off, and they make the most annoying noise ever, that noise, and it's so stupid. Urgh. I know this is actually starting to sound like an irate game or, you know, spoof, but this game really does piss me off a lot. Ugh. But if there's one thing that could definitely make this game a lot easier, it would be the ability to actually get your armor back. God, I hate these things. Whoa, how did I... Ugh. I just dodged a bullet with that, but I got hit by another one. Alright, so I suppose we'll continue one more time. See how far we get now. And we still have a whole game ahead of us. But at least you get unlimited continues, which is nice. But I really don't think I would have the patience to sit down for an entire day to beat this unless I have absolutely nothing to do. But I might try that one day just to see if I can beat it, but I doubt it. Because I'm really not that good at this game at all. They kind of do look, look like ghost condoms, don't they? Throwing javelins and stuff. Crouch. Ugh. So your best bet with these things is to, to try to outrun them and, you know, really utilize your crouch in your crouch attack as much as you can. But as you can see, I'm trying that and I'm really not getting far. So I really don't know any other strategy that would really work. Ouch. Okay. Here come the ghost condoms. <sighs> Crap. Alright, I got one more try here. Crouch here. Oh. Well, the nice thing about Unlimited Continues, though, is that you really can take your time and memorize the patterns of the enemies and stuff like that, so that's pretty nice. Kill that thing. Need a fly trap, more ghost condoms. So I'm just uh, running them here, and I'm doing pretty good so far, and yes, I got the knife! Alright, here's the boss here. No! Let's see how much time do I have left. Alright, you know what, I'm gonna try the, to continue one more time here, because I just made it to the boss, and I died, so I've gotta try this again. But at least I kept the knife, which is awesome. Oh, crap. Okay. Well, the knife is really the best weapon because you can fire off a lot of them at once. So basically, it's just a better version of the javelin, but never, ever, ever get the fireball, because even though the fireball can, you know, the attack can actually stay on the ground, but most of your enemies actually come from above, so that's why the knife, I guess, is the best weapon. That's my opinion, anyway. I don't know if a lot of other people would disagree. Okay, and that was so cheap. Wow. Because I was facing the other way, and it knocked me into the hole that was that way. What the crap? Because I was crouched like this, and I got hit, and I got knocked into that hole. Like, right here. Like, 
What the crap is up with that? Ugh. Ugh. Alright guys, I give up, so I <laughs> hope you got some entertainment value out of that, and I hope you guys enjoyed this little video, and as always guys, have a great day.